Hey everyone, it's Paige and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So as you know, my partners at ShotScope, well, they have a lot of data on how amateur golfers perform on the golf course. From their database of over, ready for this? <laughs> 200 million shots. They have identified exactly what you need to do in order to break 90 on the course. So ShotScope, they gather all of this data from their performance tracking products, such as the Pro LX Plus that I use and their V3 watch. These tags, they screw onto your grip so you can record every single shot you hit and then analyze all the stats about your own game. So in this video, I'm going to take you through the four key steps that will help you break 90 and provide you with some tips on how to achieve this. And this will apply to breaking 100, 90, 80, 70, doesn't matter where you are in your golf journey, I'm here to help. First off, it's all about distance, baby. The further you hit the ball, the better chances are of reaching more holes and hitting it closer to the pin. As a benchmark, shot scope, they suggest that hitting it over 220 yards off the tee gives you the best chance of breaking 90. So, if you hit the ball that far, it's okay. Here are some tips that might help you gain some extra yards off the tee. Most people with their golf swing lack having an active lower body, and that's actually how you're going to hit it farther and have more power. So here are a couple drills that will help you out. For this first drill, I want you to turn the club around so you're gripping it above the club head and really focusing on this whoosh. You don't want to happen on your way down before the golf ball, you want the whoosh to happen after. And this drill is really going to help you increase your swing speed. So do it over and over and over again until you get the whoosh in the right spot. So it should be right after the golf ball, that should be the fastest part of your swing. The next drill I want you to feel is if I'm grabbing your right pocket and pulling it back and your left pocket on the way through. I want you to activate your legs through your golf swing. We're all athletic, we have tried different sports, and so I want you to implement everything that you've learned before into your swing now. So you're squatting, you're pushing through as if you're about to turn and run. So make your swing as athletic as possible. So I want you to feel that you're squatting and you're pushing through it. You have so much power that you actually have to step through the shot. A lot of people lose distance because they're staying on their back foot and they are not using their legs in their swing to gain more power and distance. So I want you to exaggerate it, squat and step through it. I want you to have as much power moving forward as possible. Again, this is very exaggerated. This is just a drill, but it's going to teach you how to use your legs in your golf swing and use them to your benefit. So I really want you to feel as if you're squatting and pushing through, squatting and pushing through, like I am pushing your hip through the swing. Second, improve how you play your par five. So par fives offer a real chance to score and typically those who don't break 90 average over six shots on par five. So if you wanna get that score down, you need to start playing the par fives just a little bit better. The easiest way to do so is to get your second shot as close as possible. We've talked about how to play par fives before, but the stats, they back it up. The stats show that the closer you are to the green, the closer you hit your next shot. So yes, you might think that you have a good yardage because you stuck it close from 100 yards that one time, but the harsh reality is that it's your bad shots you need to think about. They drag your average proximity way down. So let's talk about the data because I think it's pretty fascinating. You can see the difference in a 20 handicap proximity from 25 to 50 yards and 50 to 75 yards. So. 25 to 50 yards equals 29 feet average proximity. 50 to 75 yards equals 48 feet average proximity. So play the percentages. A bad shot from a shorter distance is probably going to be closer than a bad shot from further away. Since you'll be hitting it closer on par fives, here is a couple tips to help you hit some crispy wedge shots. To get better contact on your wedges, I want you to move the ball to the middle of your stance. 
camera angle here makes it look still forward of my stance, but I promise you that it is middle. When people have it too far up in their stance, they think that they're gonna hit it higher. But you actually start hitting it fat or a little bit thin when you're lifting up. So to really compress it, and that's how you get your spin is by compressing the golf ball. You're gonna move it just a little bit farther back into your stance. I want you then to grip down to have more control and hit more of a half swing, not a full swing. It's all about flighting the golf ball, which means that you want to get it a little bit lower, and that's how you're going to get those crispy, spinny wedge shots. So move it a little farther back, set your weight forward, narrow stance, choke down, really have a controlled tight swing. That's how you get those really great wedge shots. Next, just stop three putting, right? So easy. <laughs> I know that eliminating three putts is probably just too much to ask, but currently golfers who don't break 90, three putt two to three times per round. Yeah. <laughs> so shot scope, they suggest that you try to reduce this just once around. round. something that I'm working on because I am the queen of three putts. But how do you do this? I have actually shown you guys so many drills, but working on your pace putting before you play and also holding out short putts is really going to help you build that confidence to break 90. And honestly, this applies especially to breaking 100, to 90, to 80, and to 70. Reducing three putts is really going to help. And lastly, just just hate more greens. <laughs> it might sound cliche, but it is true. The biggest difference in good and bad scores often comes down to hitting more greens and regulation. Yes, of course, you can have an amazing chipping day. There's always a way to work your way around a golf course, but typically in order to break 90, you need to be hitting at least 20% of the greens, which is actually only four greens per round, which isn't that intimidating when you think about it. So I'm sure you can all manage that if you put your mind to it. So here's a couple tips to hit more greens. You miss greens because you don't grab enough club or you're not hitting it solid. So here are two drills to help you hit it solid. This first drill is really going to help with your connection and staying in sync. So what you're going to do is stand on your left leg and all of your weight should be on your left leg. You're going to put your right leg back. I call this the flamingo drill. The weight should be, again, 100 or 99, 1%. All of the weight is on your front foot. It's really going to help with staying in sync. If you are out of sync, you're going to fall off balance and this drill is going to be quite difficult for you. So again, and what you want to do is feel super connected, you're turning together, and that's going to help you hit solid shots. Next, if you are between clubs, I recommend that you take the longer club and swing a little bit easier. Most people try to take less club and hit as hard as they possibly can, but take the longer club and hit about 95%, and that will help you hit it a little bit more solid, and I'm sure you'll hit more greens. And that's all. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And I know I probably made it sound so simple. To break none, all you need to do is hit it farther, reduce your three putts, and uh, play par fives better, and hit more greens. Like, how easy is that? But when you look at the data, and that's why I really wanted to go into the data in this video, it's not actually all that intimidating. We can have one three putt around, we can hit four greens, and we can still achieve our goal of breaking 90. And again, this applies to breaking 100, breaking 90, breaking 80, breaking 70. It's really just small changes that take your game to that next level and looking at the data It's so important because then you know where you're missing shots how you can improve and how you can ultimately get better and start achieving your goals So that's why I'm a big fan of shot scope and I hope you guys enjoy these coaching series as well And diving into the data because I think it makes golf just seem a little bit easier when you know actually what you have to do to shoot the scores that you want to be shooting. So again, the link down below so you can go get your shot scope. You can use my code PAGE for a discount and leave a comment, subscribe to my channel, like the video, and I'll see you guys next Thursday.